How does a lenticular print work? Let's first look at the shape of the lens and try to understand what's happening at an atomic level with this print illusion. So I've shown here a picture of close-up picture of a lenticular lens. And you, can, and, and you can see these ridges on the top, these semicircular ridges, and on the bottom, a flat plane. And the whole thing is made of a clear acrylic plastic. So this diagram that I'm showing here is basically, um, a, that's a section, a section view of what a, a very close-up version of, of the lens looking from the side. And when we say that a lens is 60 LPI, that's 60 lines per inch. It also more technically could be referred to as 60 lenticules. Each one of these lines is considered a lenticule. And that means that within one inch here, you're getting 60 of these ridges. And that's why when you run your fingernail across the, the lenticular plastic, you get that kind of scratchy effect. You're, you're, you're playing with these ridges here. And the ridges are, unsurprisingly, based on the name, acting as lenses. And so when you've lined up all of these lenses, what ends up happening is that, you know, when you rotate the, um, the sheet left and right, you're changing the angle of incidence at which your eye strikes these lenses. So I'm going to draw a little diagram here. And let's imagine that you're looking from what would be the left side. So these, these green arrows represent the angle of view of your eye. So what's going to happen is that the lens, the way this curved lens works, is it's going to basically block out whatever is happening behind the lens except for in the one area where your, your angle of view is. So these little dotted lines are showing that um, everything that's not behind a dotted line is going to get blocked out. So when we print a lenticular image on paper, and then that paper gets affixed to the back here. So I'm going to draw a red line. That's going to represent the paper, okay? This red line back here. And let's say we have two images. We want to do a flip image, and we're just going to flip it from, let's say, from, from black to white. So we've got two, two, uh, two frames that we want to print. So we've got a black frame and a white frame. Okay. And when the, when the image is processed, it's going to come out as a bunch of these thin black lines and alternating with white lines. So that's, that's our interlaced image. And, and, you know, really the best way to learn about lenticular printing is to make them yourself. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next few videos, but I wanted to give you an intro into the theory of why it works the way it works, just to get you started. So in this case, we're trying to do a flip from a black to a white. So what's gonna get printed down here on the paper is a half white and a half black. Now let me see if I can make it more clear. This, uh, this red, Still want it to represent the paper. I'm going to kind of make it more thick here. Okay. So again, this the red is the paper. This is the paper. This is the lens. And there's also an adhesive, which is the sticky coating that comes on the back of your lens. And that's what's going to affix the paper to the lens. So you've got your lens, your adhesive, your paper, 
And printed on the paper will be this pattern, this uh, interlaced image. And you can probably see what's going to happen here as I'm drawing this out. There's black followed by white, followed by black, followed by white. And each time that a lens repeats, or, or one of the lenticules repeats, that pattern is, is going to repeat as well. Okay. And what you'll notice happening here is that the way that that lens blocks out light is, is now going to make it so that from this green arrow, we're hitting the white part of the image. So from this angle where the green lines are, you're going to be seeing a completely white image. But if you were to turn the lens and change the angle of view, and now you're viewing it from the other side. So I'm going to draw these yellow arrows now to represent the next angle of view. And these dotted lines are going to be how the lens is filtering out the light. So it's going to sort of block everything but what's directly behind it. Now from the yellow point of view, you're seeing the black. Okay? So that's how that's basically the physics, the optical physics of how it works. And it, it gets more complicated when you're trying to do more than two frames. Now you've got to fit 12 frames in the same distance as we've fit two in this example. And that's why we need a really high resolution printer because we're going to be asking the printer to drop down these very thin stripes to, to fill in all of the different um, like frames that are happening behind each one of these semicircular lenticules. And remember, for a 60 LPI lens, that's 60 lenticules per inch, which means if you've got, say, 10 frames behind there, you need to drop down 600 lines an inch with your printer in order to make it work. Now that's starting to get pretty tough on the printer, and it can be done, but th this is why um, there's no maximum amount of frames that you can put into each lenticular. You can, in theory, put 100 frames behind each lenticule or 1,000 behind each lenticule. But you're going to need a lot of pixels um, to support all of that. And then when, when, it actually, when that image actually gets sent to the printer to be rendered and, in, and dropped down with ink on paper, is the printer really going to be able to draw out 100 lines for every 1 60th of an inch? Probably not. And so that's why there's different um, LPI lenses. So we're talking about a 60 LPI. That's kind of right in the middle range. You've got also 100 LPI lenses, which means 100 lines per inch. So it's even thinner. And so you're going to, you know, the, the result of that is that it's going to look smoother to the viewer because they're not seeing these physical ridges, right? These, these ridges in here are going to be less visible, but your printer is going to have to do more work to drop down those little lines behind each ridge. On the other hand, you could have a 20 LPI um, lens. And so that one would be, you know, on the scale of our example, it's kind of almost like this, where now you've got twice as much space to drop down your frames. Did I say 20? You've got three times as much space. If it was 30 LPI, you'd have twice as much space. But so that distance here is really what's going to, that's the sort of um, metric by which you can, you can change your lens and you can get more animation or more 3D effect from it. And the way it works for 3D is basically the same way. You just have the, each of the frames is, is more similar to the, to the one next to it. And it's kind of a, you know, if you imagine a 3D camera with those four lenses coming from four slightly different angles, that's kind of mimicking 
what's happening in here uh, with the lens. And so if you print out your four different frames and you print them as one, two, three, and four, now as you rotate this lens, you're going to see frame one or frame two, frame three, frame four. And as you as you rotate that lens back and forth, or as you walk by um, uh, one of these lenticular prints, it's going to flow between those frames. And so that's how you're going to get that sort of wiggle GIF effect. And that's what's going to create the illusion of depth in your print. Now, I've been mentioning 60 LPI. 30 LPI, 20 LPI. These are all different lenses that you can uh, play with and experiment with. But one thing that um, you have to learn about lenticular lenses is that even though it may say on the packaging 60 LPI, it's really hard to manufacture things exactly 1 60th of an inch. And in addition to that, when we look at this, this diagram, of the lens from the side. You'll notice that there's a slight distance where the plastic flattens out. So I'm basically talking about this distance right here. So the lenses are, are up here. Here are the ridges, right? And then it flattens out to create that full piece of plastic. And this distance in here, it, it, it has a little bit of an effect on the way that the lens works. So when you print your image on the back side, and so now your, your printed image is like here. This, is, this black line now will represent the paper. It's not happening here where you'd like it to be right under the ridges. There's actually some distance there. And that distance will change as these, as these light rays are coming in. It slightly changes where things need to be printed. And so what I'm talking about here is the difference between the pitch, which is 60 LPI. So this is going to be called pitch. And then there's going to be something called the optical pitch, which is basically the pitch after it's been adjusted for that slight bit of space that's happening in here and after it's been adjusted for whatever your printer setup is and some printers are working slightly different and some papers are working slightly different and so all of this to say that your optical pitch is not going to be exactly the same as your literal uh, pitch or the branded pitch on, and so for inkjet printers, often instead of 60, it's something more like 60.1 or 60.12. So I'm just going to say it's usually about 60.1 to 60.15. And the way that you determine exactly what your optical pitch is is by running something called a pitch test. And there's going to be another video later in the series on pitch tests. But for now, uh, that's all you need to understand about this concept. And we'll come back to it in practice. So I hope that gives you a good overview of the theory behind lenticular printing. And it'll make a lot more sense once you've actually made a print and attached it yourself. These things start to become intuitive and um, a lot less technical once you've worked with it a little bit. All right, cool. Let's keep going.